talk the other day too. There we go. So y'all do me a favor, drop in a chat something you're grateful for. And um, today we're going to talk about some financial health. Like I said, I'm not the expert, but I can definitely give you guys some tips that has definitely changed my life and that has put me in a position to really understand how to build wealth and really how to take it to the next level. And I'll see if I got some of my books over here to help you guys too. Um, but so uh, we can do a QA and a if you guys want. I don't have to just talk off the top of my head. I can, we can do a Q and A or I could just start off with what I do know as far as budgeting, being able to invest in different things. And then um, we can go from there. So let me, okay. Visa. Okay. So the first thing you guys want to understand is um, what is your, what is your income? All right. What's your income? and versus your expenses right so what do i make each month and i want you to tally up everything and i'm gonna pause this recording and get a better marker hold on okay so what is my income and you want to tally up everything and, and you whatever amount you come up with make sure it's the lowest amount like what is the minimum you know you'll make each month and then from there, what is your expenses per month? Okay. So my income minus my expenses will equal what I have left over, right? Now, when you're doing your expenses, you want to make sure you can think of everything possible. So, of course, we know rent, mortgage, um, car note, car insurance, um, utilities, light, water, if those you got like gas and electric, um, all the insurance you can think of, car insurance, renters insurance, medical insurance, life insurance, <laughs> dental insurance, and any other type of insurance you may have as far as your assets and stuff with those goals as well. Um, you want to include, so we'll say uh, rent, utility, those what we call, so something called consumer debt. So consumer debt, is those magazine subscriptions, your Netflix subscriptions, your uh, nothing that's a necessity, right? So consumer debt, um, which is basically usually those monthly subscriptions for streaming services, magazine services, gym service. Well, we'll, we'll, we, we'll still want to include gym, but it's not considered consumer debt because you're taking care of yourself. Um, utility rent, insurance. Um, you want to think of gas, food. Um, you want to think of um, leisure, right? Entertainment. And when you guys are doing those expenses, you need to know the entire total. So there's an app that I use. Let me drop it in the chat. Um, this is an app that I use to notify me when my bills are due because uh, one thing about it is I'm grateful. Uh, basically, I got to a point where I was not aware of when my bills were due. Uh, because my income is flowing so well, I just I just completely would forget about bills. Like they'll be paid whenever they're paid. But I wanted to make sure I knew when they were coming out. So that's a, a app I just sent you guys. You can play around with it. You can use it not just for expenses, but you can make your own notifications because you're customizing what you want to put inside the app, right? Um, let me see if I have some other things here that I'm not thinking of. Oh, your phone bills. Um, if you guys have any student loan debt. All right, so phone, uh, student loans, any loans you have in general that you're paying out. Um, I said life insurance already. Let's see what else I got. Subscriptions, websites, okay, all that kind of stuff. Okay, good deal. So you want to know what the entire number is, okay? So what a lot of people don't realize is their expenses are more than their income a lot of times or their expenses is almost equivalent to their income. And so that's why you have majority majority of the world living paycheck to paycheck, okay? Now, the first thing you have to understand is when it comes to building wealth, allocating um, any money that's left over, you first have to actually change your mindset because if your philosophy with money is, is am I automatically spend it, then that's why you're always broke or living paycheck to paycheck because you don't know this. You're not you're not a budgeter, right? You don't you don't budget your money. So what's coming out uh, each pay period? So that 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 app I just dropped in there 
it should be a great help because it's going to be a calendar version and it's going to be like a straight list version. Well, on the calendar version, you can say, okay, on the 15th, uh, I know something is coming out on the 15th and you can also set the app to give you, you know, a, a heads up three days in advance, two days in advance. And anytime those expenses come on my screen, I never swipe left and delete them. I let them hang out on my screen until they're due, right? So you want to know when there's when there was a due. Now, another thing you want to make sure you understand is what is what is left over? Okay. What is left over after each pay period? Okay. So you know what's going out, but what's when you get to this pay period, what most people do is okay, I get paid on Friday. And then when they get paid on Friday, they list everything that's about to come out. And then there's then then whatever's left over, they haven't made plans for whatever's left over. They've only planned to spend it. The last three letters of spend is end. So if your mindset is always to spend what's left over, you're going to be broke for the rest of your life for living paycheck to paycheck. Because whatever's left over should be going to a savings account, investments. That's it. And then besides that, ties, right? So the ties will come out as an expense. So savings and investments. So what people are not willing to do, they're not willing to sacrifice. So I have a goal this year to be fit, to be rich and fit. That's my that's my theme for the rich and fit. So I really want to focus on my health this year. I spent the last four years just obsessed and submerged doing everything for other people, but I never, I wasn't taking care of my, my body as much as I needed to. So this year is health and wealth, right? So you want to make sure you guys, so with the, the wealth side, um, last year, probably the end of 2020, I started really getting obsessed with more of my saving my money and investing my money uh, because I was traveling. I spent hundreds and I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars traveling so much. And I made a decision last summer. I was going to cut out a lot of the traveling. I was going to cut back and I wanted to make a sacrifice when I just chill out. And anything that's level is going up as savings and investments. All right. So you guys want to know the difference. Now, what if you don't have anything left over where this is where you look at um, uh, what you want to do is start doubling down on what you can hurry up and get rid of. Right. Can you get rid of some subscriptions? Um, can you get rid of some of that consumer debt? Because you want to, things that are not a necessity, you want to take a temporary break from so you can have the extra income so you can start having, having the savings account and so you can start having an investment portfolio. So, uh, of course, that stocks, cryptos, real estate, those are like your top three, right? So it's, as far as investing, you can allocate um, some of your money into um, a stock portfolio. I would start with cryptos and stocks as your top two investments and then work your way into real estate. Um, and then with your savings account, you want to you want to have a good cushion in your savings, and I'm going to go through savings here in just a second. But does anybody have any questions on income versus expenses and what's left over? Yes or no in the chat? Yes or no? Y'all want to move on? Let me know. Let me know. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. What's so, up, hey, Payroll? How you getting? I ain't gonna use the chat. Good to see you, man. Okay, let's move on. Carlisle said when y'all ain't saying that, let's move on. Okay, perfect. So that's what we have. So now, how do I create extra income? You want to have what we call disposable income. This right here is, is a game changer. The disposable income is going to be whatever was left over or extra money, okay? So if you got, um, like I do I have a lot of different streams of income. So uh, one income, my goal is not to even touch it at all. So that'd be about five figures at the end of the year. I have a friend of mine from time to time with her business. So I just use that, actually use that for, um, for like entertainment. So I use it for like play money. So disposable income guys, of course, this is the money that is left over pay, every pay period. Okay. Now, remember when you're doing those expenses, you got to know how much it is to fill up that tank and how long your tank is going to last. You got to know how much you're spending in groceries. Now, the good thing you guys can do is go back to your bank statement. Before I go to bank disposable income, go to your bank statement for the past three months. And I want you to, I got this from Mr. Nicole. You want to, um, when you pull your bank statement, I want you to highlight um, when you were mindlessly spending money. So you could have just swiped the little food at the front of the Walmart or the Target. Uh, you could have went through the drive through the fast food. When did you impulsively swipe your card, right? What what is what in your bank statement was not a was not a part of your budget? You want to you want to go through the past one to three months and highlight that, and that will show you where you got disposable income. Does that make sense, family? 
Yes or no? Yes or no? Go through your bank statement, the last one to three statements, and highlight anything that was not a necessity. All right? Fast food. I don't know what people I don't spend. I don't really spend money, so I don't know. But <laughs> um, y'all get it, right? So anything that wasn't a part of your budget, it wasn't inside your plan, I want you to highlight it and tally up that full number. Now you can go for, I usually tell people the last 90 days because, um, I mean, it, it may seem a little tedious, but if you want to change your life, those are the things you want to got to do, right? Just sit still for a second, pull your bank statement, highlight, bro, like, oh, I spent $20 that day. And God, it's going to add up. I used to use this uh, when I was doing um, network marketing heavy. I would tell people, pull your statement, look at where you spent money for the past, you know, X amount of days. And you will find where you had some extra income. Now, it may not feel like a lot, you know, okay, I only spent an extra 300. Well, that's 300 dollars you could have put in your savings account. All right. You went out to eat. It's easy for me to spend 100 dollars going out to eat, right? So I don't go out to eat. I just cook at home now. Right. So I spent 80 dollars on Sundays, go get groceries, and it lasts me all week. All right. We use about a week, week and a half. So groceries. Oh, another expense. If y'all got kids, <laughs> if you got kids, put them kids on the budget too. All right. Pack their lunches. Don't do anything impulsively. If they want the toys, tell them to chill out. They need to earn it, right? My nephew, he's, he's five years old now, and I tell him what to do with a dollar, and I go over there as well. And he knows what to do with a dollar. I say, every time you get a dollar, it's not a full dollar. You're getting 80 cents, all right? 10% is going to savings. 10% is going to you, really 70 cents. So he knows to pay himself first and, um, and put it into a savings, and the rest he's, he's supposed to, you know, if he had expenses, right? But this is what you guys want to do to find where you have disposable income. Now, if, once you find what's in your bank statement on top of if you have any extra streams of income that's coming in, um, one thing you want to do is take that disposable income. And remember, you want to start allocating it to a savings account and, and um, investments. Now, the percentage will be up to you. All right. One rule of thumb you guys want to work on. This is my um, lifestyle goal right here to keep my, um, so out of 100%, we know, well, I pay taxes later. So <laughs> let's say after each pay period, whatever you get after your, after your taxes come out, um, you wanna take, you wanna make sure you can get your lifestyle to be under 25% of your income. Okay, so let's flip that. Let's say your expenses, somebody drop a number in the chat. Okay, my expenses, let's say, your expenses are $3,500 a month. These are my expenses per month, okay? $3,500 a month. What you want to do, you want to have two goals. Your first goal, I'm going to put goal one. It should be to make two times your expenses, okay? I spelled that wrong, but y'all get it. Income goal. Your first income goal should be to make two times your expenses, okay? Because what happens is when your income and expenses are equal, you never have any money left over to invest and save. And what happened is you get, you turn 40, 50, 60, 70 years old and you never, you've done the same thing with work is you expend as much as you make, okay? So you wanna make an income goal. You may pick up a second part-time job. You may do some things online to make some money. You gotta make a sacrifice because the sacrifice is going to be, uh, the reward is going to be greater than the sacrifice. My brother, he's picking up, that boy is hustling like crazy right now. He picked up a second job. He makes pretty well, but he wants to get ahead of his lifestyle. So he picked up a second job part-time. And so he's, he's, he's working on paying down some debt. And that way he can have a cushion. He can breathe when he get back to just having a single job again. All right. So if you have that, guys, find a way to create uh, some extra streams of income. So your first goal is to make two times your expenses, okay? And then this will put you in the, um, this will start putting you in a little bit of, fine. it's not full financial freedom, but it'll put you ahead of most people because most people only make, um, um, they don't make two times their expenses. It's actually usually equals like a one-on-one -on -one ratio. Now the second income goal should be four times your expenses. This is when you start doing whatever you really want to do a little bit, okay? So four times your expenses. But what you do is even when you make double or four times, you don't spend any money, you don't change your lifestyle, and you don't increase your expenses. I'm going to be living on $3,500 for probably for the next five years. I have a goal 
to have over $10 million liquid. And I'm not spending, I'm not changing my life. I'm going to be a millionaire. I mean, I am a millionaire, but, you know, we'll say in this play, and my goal is to be a millionaire. It's probably still, um, I, I don't know how long I've been living here, but I don't really want to go past this margin because I want to have a high net worth and I get into that next. So are we good on income goals, guys? So my expenses, you got to make a full list. Gas on a monthly basis, gas, electric, mortgage, all the insurances, your kids, what's their expenses. And you can't forget, um, another thing you want to be aware of is when you have accepted an invitation to different um, events, baby showers and weddings and stuff like that, or birthdays, and you didn't plan to spend any money for that particular event. So you want to be aware. You want to add that to your, your upcoming expense. That app I dropped in the chat. You want to say, I know on April 15th, so-and-so birthday is coming up. Let me set aside X amount of money for that birthday so it doesn't go against your plan, okay? It doesn't go against your plan. So you guys put on the um, expenses go. Two, ten, yeah, I got four. a question. What you got? I got a question. So you said when we get to making two times and four times our uh, expenses, we want to don't spend the money, don't change our lifestyle, and what else? Just don't, just act like when you get the increase, the increase goes here. Okay. The okay. increase, the goal is I want to make as much money. So last year I took probably, let's say I got a $10,000 a day. I take 10,000, I want to take two grand and I'll put the whole 8,000 in crypto for my investment portfolio. So I don't, I don't change my, the goal is not to change your lifestyle right away. We ain't worried about that right now because what most people do, and I'm, I'm going to talk about that. Your goal is how much more money can I make than my expenses? I need to make way more money than what I'm bringing in. I mean, than what I'm paying out. So whatever, because the goal is when you start making two to times four, the goal is that comes disposable income. So you make two times your expenses, four times your expenses, 10 times your expenses. And it's people in the world who have 100,000 times their expenses. They are putting it in their savings and investment portfolio. Okay? So what you don't want to do is be this person. You don't want to have a, a, a high income and a low net worth. Okay? So what happens is you got people clearing one, two, three hundred thousand dollars a year but they only got 20K worth of a net worth investments. Now, what do I mean when I say net worth? Anything that we can be completely, that can be exchanged for cash quickly. It's called liquidated, liquid liquid assets, all right? Um, for those who trade, it's called a, a Forex liquidity pool. It's, it's, it's a pool of cash. If you do cryptos, it's a pool of cash. It doesn't matter what can be changed to cash. So for instance, I don't have my ring on right now, but any jewelry, any art, any real estate you may own, how much money you have in your savings, how much money you have in your investments portfolio, your stock portfolio, crypto portfolio. If we add all of those things up, you may have a house. That house is worth $100,000. So you got 100K worth of net worth of your house. You got 20K worth of jewelry. You got 30K worth of art. You got 50K worth of crypto. This is all considered liquid assets because they can easily be turned to cash. Does that make sense, family? Let me know, let me know, let me know. Y'all can unmute your line so I can get a quicker yes. Okay, cool. So the goal is I keep my lifestyle low, 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 low. I, I deal, I, you have to, um, you can't allow the pressure of looking rich to deter you from the plan. I can care less about how much money people I let people. I don't care about telling people how much money I make. I don't care about that. My goal is to create a, a, a nine-figure portfolio. So I do that by not upgrading my car, by keeping my old Lexus and running that thing to the ground drive, by staying at home and cooking. By like, you see what I'm saying? You got to make those sacrifices, right? It's some people who live here and they still have a gym membership. We had a brand new gym downstairs. It was open three weeks ago, two three weeks ago. And they'd rather go pay $150 a month at the athletic club up the street. All right. Now me, I'm going to use the one I'm paying for my rent. You see what I'm saying? So you can keep that $150 a month and, and put it towards something. Right. So you, but you got to decide how you want to split your percentages. Okay. So for instance, if you got, let's say you get your, so let's say uh, you guys get your tax, you get 10,000, you get, well, you get $3,000 worth of taxes back. You can put, um, you can split your percentages where you want to do 30, 70, 
meaning you put 30% into your savings and 70% into your investment. So you decide how you want that percentage to go. You may do 60, 40, 90, 10, but don't get excited when you get a lump sum of money. It's not for you, okay? Don't get excited about spending. Your philosophy can't be, I'm a spender, all right? Kill that, kill that philosophy, I'm not a spender, all right? I, I, my goal is to what? Have a high net worth. We want, we want to flip the script. Most people have a high income and a low net worth. These are your middle class usually where they, they, want to, they always want to upgrade. They always want to look new. They always want the most recent things, but they have a low net worth, right? So what you want to do, uh, for instance, people are so angry with the rich. And I'm like, don't be angry with me because I'm, I'm calling myself rich today, all right? Because I understand what the rich do. This is what you guys have to know. The more money you allocate to your liquid assets, the less taxes that you pay. You can make $200,000 a year, okay? Let's take two people that make 200K. This person only lives off $50,000 a year. Y'all following me? Person A brings in 200,000, but they only live off 50K. Y'all with me? Talk to me, yes or no, yes or no? Yes. Then person B, they live off the whole 200K. <laughs> they live off the whole 200. What is person A doing? They took 150K and put it into what? A savings and investment portfolio. So by the end of the year, they only got taxed off $50,000. This person got taxed a whole $200,000 because they spend, they spend it. All right? You want to allocate it to your liquid assets, guys. All right? You don't. So this is why people hate on the rich and wealthy because the rich and wealthy have all of their morning money in liquid assets. So when you hear they got a billion dollar network, they got a hundred million dollar network, a ten million dollar network, it's because even though it's their net worth, it's not in their bank account. They're not living off 10 million. Rich, uh, Jeff Bezos and Elon don't have a billion in the bank. They have a billion dollars worth of liquid assets. So it's money that they're, they're not living off of it. Does that make sense, family? Perfect sense. Yeah. Good. You don't want to be person B. This is my, this is 95% of people. They make 35K, they spend 35K. Now they may be tight, like man, well, B, that's not enough money. Well, you need to find a way to downgrade. You got to make a sacrifice, right? Get a roommate. It's, it's just temporary. You can do something for one year because the goal is I know the excitement is I know that this is temporary, right? You got to be humble enough to go out there and hustle. Do some DoorDash, do some Instacart, do some. I don't know. Whatever you got to do to hustle, because you know that hustle is going towards your disposable income, right? There are people who go get two or three jobs to, to stay, to remain person B. They just want to spend more money, right? So you don't want to do that. So understanding high income versus, um, versus your network. So you want to begin to be like, okay, what stocks do I want to invest? Go pick up a stock class, right? Um, what, what stocks do I want to buy? What, if, what, what crypto do I want, do I want to buy, right? Um, understanding what's new, what's out, because there's a lot of new things that's coming out that you may not want to be in. A, you may not want to take, I'll be, be, be like this. You can also find things to become a silent investor, right? I got a best friend, she owns a business. And I said, once I, maybe I go get a line of credit. Okay, I get the credit next, but maybe I have some, um, I got to talk about credit. <laughs> Let me go on credit right quick. So let's say I, I get on credit, but I want to give this example. She wants to open another business. I say, well, no, I don't want to run your business, but I would love to be a silent partner. I would love to be a silent investor. I'm going to give you X amount of money. Can you just passively, which means every single month, can you passively just send me $500 every single month? That's all I ask. And now that $500, I'm getting in profit. I became an investor. I helped them start the business. The agreement is, since I helped you and I became an investor, I, my payout is to be $500 a month, point blank period, for five years, right? Y'all got me? So they pay me $500 a month. I put it into what? My savings and investments. It doesn't come, it doesn't come a part of my lifestyle. It becomes a part of my network. Y'all got me? Yes. yes. Perfect. So look at some friends and families that you have. You guys also want to make sure you're not investing with people who just don't know what they're doing. You want to make sure you're dealing with people who are expert in their field. You want to make sure you, you, you look at their, their uh, bank statement. I mean, 
if you're becoming a partner, if you're coming in, you gotta you gotta make sure that you're gonna get some type of return on the investment. Don't just be go support your friend because they just started clothing line. You gotta make sure you see you can support them by being a purchaser, but you wanna make those partnerships or be an investor with people who, who are doing different businesses and you see them have some type of income. Maybe they wanna expand their business or something like that. And so you can leverage that expansion and get some return on the investment. It's, it's basically like becoming your own shark tank. Okay. You become your own shark tank. That's that's really the mindset you wanna have. All right. So when it comes to, so let me pause for a second. Do y'all have any, any questions before I go into credit? What's on y'all mind? Y'all mind, y'all mind expanding? Y'all like, hmm. Okay, cool. So now let's talk about the power of credit. So they say this, that's a word that goes around. You, there's a guy, Dave Ramsey, there's another guy, Grant Cardone. And they have two different philosophies. Greg Cardone is, his philosophy is good debt, okay? He believes in what we call good debt, which means, uh, for instance, I worked on my credit last year for the first time in my life. My credit score went from 575, I'm about to crash. I think I'm at like 725 right now. So the reason I started focusing on my debt, my credit is because of him. So what happens is um, now I can go get $20,000, $30,000 lines of credit, which means, hey, Ms. Burrell, you got good credit, you got great income. We're going to give you some money that you can use to do whatever you want, right? So what you do, guys, is, and it may not be that high. You may get a $2,000 credit card limit, something like that. What you want to do is take that credit that you have. So let's say I'm going to keep it. I'm going to say $2,000, right? So let's say you got a $2,000 credit card um, and you got several options. You can put some in crypto, you can buy some cryptos. So you may go buy $2,000 worth of what we call VeChain. So VeChain is a cryptocurrency. It's probably like six, six, six cents a share right now, all right? So you don't spend the whole $2,000, maybe you spend $500 worth. So you get $5,000 worth of VeChain. So you get 8,300 shares of, of uh, some, somebody's crypto, right? Then you put a little bit into Facebook, whatever stock portfolio, find some stocks that you want to invest in. Um, you take another uh, percentage, maybe a thousand of it, and maybe you find a way to be somebody's silent partner and you work out a deal. Hey, pay me $100 a month. You know, whatever you can do is start, guys. You don't have to have these huge numbers, okay? Uh, hey, so and so, pay me. I'm gonna give you a thousand to get your extra. I don't know, a new website, a new apparel, whatever you need to do. Uh, just give me a hundred dollars a month passively for the next two years or something like that, right? You want to make sure you can get a return on the profit, though, okay? So, um, um, two to five years, something like that, right? Because you did them a favor. So, do y'all get what I'm saying? You use. So then, what happens is when when now if there's two rules. One rule is when it comes to credit, the card, okay, building the credit, the spending of the card should be below 30%. All right. So typically you're not going to spend the whole two grand, but if you know how to trick the, the rules of the game, if you pay this $2,000 back down and put it in the bank billing statement, then you're good to go. So it won't affect your credit. All right. If you have a higher card, if you have like a $10,000 credit card limit, then you can spend 2 k easily and not go outside of the 30% parameters, okay? And I'll go into that in just a minute. But just stick with me right here. So the, the key is, where do I have some capital? I need capital, all right? So that capital could be credit. It could be your 401k. It could be um, anything, all right? So for instance, I had about an extra two $2,500 last Last year, I just went about a whole bunch of crypto, and that twenty five hundred turned into a PPP loan. Okay, that's all I got to say. <laughs> and I dropped it all on crypto. Okay, that twenty five hundred dollars turned into a PPP loan. That's all I can say, as far as profit goes. So it turned over a profit. So you want to find ways where you can find capital and allocate that capital. And capital is the same thing as disposable income. Okay, you want to find capital that you can allocate to these different investments. So when you look up in the next two to five years, you're like, holy crap, my net worth is 20,000. My net worth is 50,000. My net worth is 100,000. 
Now, remember, let's say you bought 8,300 shares of a stock or a crypto, or you invested it somewhere, you only spent $500, and this 500 grew to 5,600 in two, in two years. So you made $5,100 worth of profit, okay? Now, Grant, his thing is, if he does use debt, he wants to make sure that whatever he invests, he, he's going to invest in, that he can get a profit right, right, like right away, like right within 30 days. All right. Because he wants to pay, he wants to use the profits from the investment to pay back the credit card. Okay. So you want to be mindful of that. But these are just different nicks and acts that you guys can leverage to because remember, what is the goal, y'all? Somebody remember what is the goal? We're not spending, we're working on building what? Building credit. Building net worth. Building your net credit too. Credit too. So the reason I got obsessed with credit is because I wanted to start using my high, my high uh, credit lines to invest. That's that's really. I mean, I don't. Besides, probably buying a house, I'm not really about to go finance nothing. Right, my car is good. Everything else is good. So if you do use credit, you can use it as what we call as good debt. All right, bad debt is consumer debt. Um. You know, the person who's going to go, so consumer debt, you guys may have been in this space before, where a couch, you bought a love, uh, what do they call it, a couch set, a love seat set uh, for $1,200 and you financed it. Oh, okay. You financed it. So instead of paying $1,200, because you went through a finance and you ended up paying $3,500. So what happened is the bank said, we're going to give person B. Uh, we're going to finance it since they don't have $1,200 cash. $1,200 is not a lot of money. So since they don't have $1,200 cash or they want, they want to save up and wait, I'd rather have no furniture in my house and save up $1,200 versus going to go to a, 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 a furniture store saying, hey, I want can y'all run my credit? Can y'all finance me $1,200? And they say, yes, you are approved. And guess what? If we approve you, you're not going to pay only 1200 You're going to pay 1200 plus interest. The interest means since you borrowed $1,200, we're going to tax you on borrowing $1,200. So you actually end up paying $3,500. So they just made $1,300 off of you, if my math is correct. All right. So that's why credit is also important. Credit gives you, if I had, if, if I just happen to want to finance something, they would have charged me that. They probably would have charged me like $12.50. They would have just charged me $50 extra dollars for credit because, because my credit is amazing, right? So what happens is, guys, when you don't have credit, credit is your identity. Credit shows um, your, your level of financial health. Um, it's like your blood pressure. <laughs> they need to vet you. Can we trust? Giving this person X amount of money, are they likely to pay us back? All right. Now, just because your credit is low doesn't mean you you don't pay back. Sometimes people like me, I didn't have any credit at all. I, I didn't have any proof that I was a good client. So I built my credit to show that I'm a good client. So now they don't mind giving me X amount of money because they know I'm going give to give them their money back. So how do they benefit? At the end of the day, they still going to make some money off of interest. OK, so that's how these banks and stuff make money off of interest. So credit can be used to make sure you get anything you want for the price that it, the, the value of, of the uh, purchase versus the value of the purchase and interest. Right. For instance, person A may want to get a car. I remember Ms. Cole talked about this one. Um, person A and person B. So remember, person B is a bad person. OK, so they both go get a car. The car is twenty five thousand dollars. All right, this step, these are the same people with the $200,000 a year income. So person A has the good credit, A credit, right? Person B has bad credit. This person has, a, you could say 680 and above, uh, but let's say 700 plus, and then this person has like a 580. Now, that doesn't mean they have a lot of debt. They just, they just probably never had a credit card. They could just have no credit at all. But because their score is so low, the bank says, if I'm gonna give you a car for $25,000 and you don't have any proof that you are a good tenant, all right, how am I gonna get my 25K back? I'm gonna tax you 25K plus more, all right? So the bank says, I'm gonna charge you an extra $15,000 worth of interest. So I'm gonna give you the 25K, but if I give you the 25K, it's gonna come with another price. 
I'm going to tax you. To borrow $25,000 from me is going to cost you $15,000. Does it make sense, family? Yes. You shouldn't be okay doing that. All right. I was completely ignorant to credit and my car, they would hit me, they would hit me on my head. It makes me so angry. Can't, I just can't wait for that to be over with because I was ignorant to this before. All right. So you shouldn't be okay paying out an extra fifteen thousand when the car is only worth twenty five k and it's a liability. It's on depreciating value. So you end up paying uh, another forty k for this car, and this person only paid an extra thousand. They paid twenty six k, and you paid forty k, only because you're crazy, right? So. That's why you want to get your credit right. People are completely misses. I was one of those people. I didn't understand it. But once I became ignorant, it's not a bliss, guys. The more in the dark you are when it comes to finances, the more your account going to be in the dark. All right. So this person is going to pay pretty much the value of the car because the, 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 the loaner says they have good history. I believe they're going to pay us back to 25K. We're not going to punish them. Because they don't show us any history. But we're going to punish this person because they don't have a history and et cetera. Right? So, but this is what most people want to do. They want to go use good credit to use, they want to use good credit for a bad debt. This is what, this is what a bad consumer does. Person A, rather go buy a brand new car for 25 k Versus go get a $25,000 line of credit. Take that same 25, instead of using 25K to get a car, I will use 25K to do what? What should you do? Put it in your savings and investments. There you go. I will find something to invest in to bring me back a new stream of income, passive income. Maybe I'll go buy me a real estate property. Maybe I invest in somebody's business, but I'll take this 25K. And I will find something that will bring me back to flip this two, three, four, five times over. All right. So that's how you want to look at money. So that's why, you know, I'm not really uh, obsessed with spending. Because people always say, you know, people know I travel a lot and all that kind of stuff. But I'm like, you know, at the end of the day, I don't want to do any of that. <laughs> because I'm not obsessed with income. I'm obsessed with a high net worth. All right, that's my obsession. So you you might see me wearing the same clothes for five years. I kept this. I want net worth. All right. <laughs> so uh, I just wanted to make sense, family. So we first assess our income versus our expenses. We also have to be aware of any upcoming expenses that are not something we, we would usually be expecting. Like I said, the birthdays, weddings, and stuff like that. What is coming up in the next six to twelve months? Okay. Um, after that, I need to see what I have left over. If that means you need to sit at home and read a book or watch something on or bring out a DVD, all right, whatever you got to do to nickel and dime every single, every single part of your money. All right. People call you to bar and say, listen, my money is tight right now. I don't have it. All right. They need to, they need to listen to this video. <laughs> all right. So we assess our income versus our expenses. Our goal is to start creating disposable income, also known as capital. We take that capital and we become our own shark tank. Savings, investments, and multiple streams of income. Your multiple streams of income is to bring you in passive income. So remember, I get some capital. Instead of go buying the car, the clothes, and the unnecessary stuff, I take that capital and I find somebody's business to invest in or a partnership or I invest into stocks, cryptos, real estate, whatever I can find. And you want to make sure you don't, you want to make sure whatever you do invest in is not an emotional investment. It's very, you did your research. You did, you understood who the corporate staff is. Do you understand how that investment is going to impact the world? Is it going to be something to change the world? For instance, I was up looking today. Um, it came up on my YouTube, but I don't know where I first saw the thing, but it's a mower. It's a, it's a, it's an electric, how do I explain that? It's an automatic lawnmower. It doesn't require people. It's a computer lawnmower. 
And the thing came up and I started looking into the company and their shares are like $5 a share right now. But it's basically to a point where people can mow golf courses and these big landscapes and nobody is riding the mower. It's an automatic computer generated mower. And I saw it had like um, those panels on top of it. And it just drives itself and completely assesses the land. It's like, this. it's really cool. So I was starting to do research. I wanted to know how long they've been around. I wanted to know um, their profit and loss statement. I wanted to know how, you know, is this something that's going to be a game changer? If it is, then I'll take my capital. And right now, their shares are $5.60 a share, right? So as they continue to grow and, and progress, one day I may look up at this thing and jump to $100 a share, right? But since it's five sixty today, I may just drop five hundred dollars on it. So how many times is five going to five hundred? Two hundred? Two fifty? No, that's completely wrong. One fifty? <laughs> one hundred times, right? So that means I'm gonna get one hundred shares at five dollars and sixty cents a pop. So I spent five hundred dollars to get one hundred shares. One day I look up and these 100, this $500 um, is now worth what? 5,000, is that correct? 100 times, no, 10,000. I spent 500, I bought 100 shares. Those shares today are valued at $5 a piece. When that value changes to $100, my my new my balance would now be 10 grand. That's how investing works. So get in early while it's low, buy a whole bunch, wait for the price to jump. Now, not all the investments gonna pay out, you know, right away. Some of them take years, two, five, 10 years, right? So those are things you got to keep in mind. You're not looking for a quick return either, guys. That's one thing you want to this is why people are not able to do this part because they're looking to flip money, they're looking for a quick get rich thing, right? You want to think about longevity. You're going to get older. You're going to need medical attention. You, you don't want to be working at 70 years old. All right. You want to, you basically want to understand your net worth is your, is your freedom. The sooner you can make this happen, retirement is not age. Retirement is net worth. And then ultimately retirement is not sitting at home all day. Is now I get, I have the freedom to do what I want. Maybe you want to be a chef. At least you can cook without needing the money you're making from cooking. All right. Maybe you want to be a painter. Maybe you want to just have a community um, um, organization. You just go out there and do things for the community. You don't have to do anything for profit anymore because your network is sitting on the network. Does that make sense, man? Yes. So what most people yes. do, they go to school, they go back to school and get an education. Ain't nothing wrong. They don't need all that. You just need. I'm going to be really tr tr transparent. You don't hold, go have to go back. I'm going to tell you all the way you need to go back to school. Go back to school because it's a part of your plan to make more money so you can take that money and create more capital. That's the only time it makes sense. Outside of that, unless you're a doctor, architect, engineer, you don't need, you don't need a degree. Ultimately, if you use that degree, use the degree to become, get a promotion, use that degree to make more money because to make more money, you need to be saving it and investing it. All right, don't go get a degree and increase your lifestyle. That, it don't make sense. You're still broke, you're still check the check. We're going to stay in our same budget, all right? You got to find that budget you're going to lock in. Maybe you want a new house real bad. Maybe you want a new car. Uh-uh. If it's still working, put all that money into saving and investments. Become your own shark tank. Find other business and ventures that you can invest in where now you got day day paying you, day day's business is sending you $200 a month. This person's business is sending you $1,000 a month. And you just letting it go. Into, and when they're sending you the money, you don't increase your lifestyle. You put it back into a stock portfolio, investment portfolio, art, jewelry, something that can become liquid assets. Okay? So that's what you guys want to be mindful of. And don't forget, you can leverage credit, but you leverage credit the right way. Don't leverage all this good stuff for liability. We don't want liability, y'all. All right? If you can hold on to that car as long as you can now. Listen, if the car will have you on the side of the road, you know, go ahead and get you, get you another car, all right? But you want to think of what's the least amount of money that I can, I can spend so I can still maintain a decent living, but at the same time, I can start allocating it, all right? So you got to make it make sense. Uh, let me see. Let me find a book. 
one of my favorite books. So, of course, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you want to check out. I just look at a lot of YouTube and articles and stuff now, but uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Cash Flow Quadra, anything from Robert Kiyosaki, um, Dave Ramsey. He's now he's going to be a little bit more biased. He's going to tell you not to do the credit thing. He's going to tell you not to do no good debt. His all uh, his objective is to completely make sure you never live with debt at all. So I'm like I'm on both sides. I'm like, well, I get that too. If I can leverage a good credit and then hurry up and pay off, use the profits to pay off the debt, then I'll be good. But he recommends no debt at all. So you're going to have a, a point of view from both, you know, whoever you listen to. So you don't want to be biased. You really want to be open minded. But he shows people how to remove. I mean, cars, houses, anything you can think of, student loans. If you want to remove debt, I promise you, he's your person, Dave Ramsey. Um, Grant Cardone, he's a maniac. <laughs> uh, Grant Cardone, he's a businessman. Um, he's he's really heavy in the real estate portfolio. I think he has a billion dollar real estate portfolio now. But he just, um, and he's good at leveraging other people. So he'll say, hey, man, I found this property. Um, they want $100 million for it. And so he'll like send out an email blast. Hey, y'all have found a property for $100 million. Who want to buy in with me? And so you have all these people who send money, or he don't, he don't use his money. He just, they send them money and they just get a certain portion of the profits, right? So they build a big condominium. They build a big real estate property and whatever the tenants pay him, that he paid back the investors with. Um, I'm missing somebody. Millionaire, millionaire next door. This is the book that'll teach you about high income versus low. And it's really old. So you'll have to kind of, you have to probably find a newer version. But um, but ultimately, he talks about the rich and wealthy versus the poor and middle class. Uh, this is the scenarios you'll hear about uh, people who have what we call hyper consumption. So usually that's your middle class and people who like, who like to look rich. Um, they call what we call hyper consumers. So it's minute they get a new, they get, get some money coming in they're quick to go spend it, right? And a lot of of times that mindset trickles down to generations because if you're used to looking at your parents, um, you know, there's two ways to look at you. might have a parent who's used to struggling and their mentality is that they're poor all the time. They don't have any money. You got to make sure you don't say those words, right? You can't say, I don't have any money. I don't have the time. You can't, you got to make sure that's completely out of your mind because what happened is, remember, everything I said today was the skill side, but everything you really want to do is... um, Everything you really want to do is really going to be a part of your mindset, okay? It's really going to be a part of your mindset. So start changing your – the key is change your philosophy on money. Philosophy on money. Change your philosophy on money. You're not broke. You're not living paycheck to paycheck. Those words should not be coming out of your mouth. I don't have the money. I'm not going to have this paycheck. Don't ever use those words because what you're believing is that, first of all, you're believing that God is not infinite. And secondly, secondly, you're not believing because you just don't know no better. The thing with wealth, guys, it's not about, it's not about how much money you make. It's not about opportunities. It's not about the, the fact that you just got a big lot sum of money. None of that matters. It's about allocation. All right. It's not about opportunity. It's about where you put it in your philosophy. That's how money is. All right. And then by default, when you look up these books, guys, it's going to send you a whole bunch of recommendations, right? This is nothing compared to the amount of information that's out there. You can literally just get on Google and just type in, you know, budgeting tools, budgeting books, budgeting authors, wealth offers, financial authors. You can get on YouTube and just go on a binge, right? Instead of watching Netflix and Hulu and all that stuff, just go on a binge and learn more. I mean, your life will completely change. It's so funny how this little bit of information will completely change your life because it's the right information, all right? These are the, uh, Grant Cardone. Uh, he cursed a lot. So if you want to listen to somebody curse, I would Grant Cardone. Um, Dave Ramsey. So these are just a few. I mean, this is like I said, this is nothing compared to the amount of information that's out there. So a lot of times I'm just reading on Google and YouTube, right? So <clears throat> just a couple of people to start with. But um, 
but understanding how money works, like I hope that changes your guys' life like drastically. And remember, it's long term, it's longevity, and it's 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 over time. All right, you can invest in your four hundred one k's, your Ross, and stuff like that. Um, if you guys check out the crypto side of holding money, it's called staking. S T A K I N G K I N G staking money. So your savings account is going to give you point zero one percent per year. They're going to basically give you nothing. It's kind of laughable. Uh, so if you sit your money in a savings account, they say, "Hey, we're going to give you some. So we're going to give you some interest back. We're going to give you some profit. All right. So if you leave a thousand dollars in there, they're probably going to give you some like a penny. They'll give you some change, right? But in twelve months, they're going to give you like a penny. If you put a thousand dollars in a staking account with cryptos." Um, they'll pay you uh, anywhere from five to fifteen percent per year, and you just leave it in there. All right, so they're gonna they're gonna give you a return on your investment, or they're gonna give you a return on your money sitting in there, a, a return that makes sense. All right, so you may put a thousand dollars in there, and by the end of the year, you may come out with two three hundred dollars um, profit because you just left it sitting in there. All right, so of course, the more money you put in there, the bigger the profit will be. So that's what the savings account should be doing, but it's not doing those numbers at all. All right. Um, because if it all comes back around, guys, any money you have in your savings account, the bank is doing this part. They're taking, they're leveraging your money to invest. They're leveraging your money to give out loans, to get more money from other people. So don't be a pawn. Know how everything works so you can be a part of the play. All right. So uh, but that's, that's a little bit what I have today. Um, I hope this makes makes sense. <laughs> Did y'all get some value? I got a whole lot. Thank you. I appreciate you. Good, good, good deal. And from there, you just have to have a plan. Just make a plan. More income, more capital. And the more you, the sooner you can get down on your debt, the better. Um, Dave Ramsey used to say is get rid of that first. Um, like I said, I'm a biased about that because I'm like, you spent 12 months not saving anything. So just make a plan where you still save a certain percentage. Oh, I need to see how much time I got. Okay, I got four minutes. I got to go progress. Did y'all get this? Can y'all screenshot this? Yes. All right, good. Uh, so the last thing is what they call... This won't move. Okay. So the other thing they have is called different savings. So... It may seem overwhelming, so don't let it like feel like don't make you, don't 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 feel like you gotta do all this in six months. All right, this, this is over time, okay? So um, let's say somebody made ten thousand dollars. Okay, I'm gonna kid again. All right, so what they want to do? Remember, you want to allocate uh, twenty five percent to your expenses. Remember, our goal is to make sure our income is two to four times our expenses, all right? So you'll be able to get to this number one day, okay? So just make it a goal. Um, and then they may allocate a certain percentage to a business account. Oh, that's a whole other conversation. You wanna put your money in a business account and pay yourself from a business account. I'm gonna make some notes over here, some other topics to talk about. We can talk about it next week. I do one more call next week. Uh, um, yeah, that's a whole other conversation. And then you put another percentage. Um, how long tell me to leave? Another percentage will go, so you may do 25% here, 30% here, and another percent, 25% um, for taxes. All right, this is me saying if I'm putting it into a business account. All right, but I'm gonna talk about that topic next week, how to break down your income, okay? But a couple of things people do, they have different types of savings account. One type of savings account is your emergency savings. And um, you can have an immediate emergency savings and then you can have a lifestyle of savings. So the immediate one, you have like five to 10 K in it, right? So this is, you might need the stove repaired, you may need the roof repaired, you know, just quick money you can have access to, okay? The other one is what I call the lifestyle savings. And this is where you have about six to 12 months of your lifestyle saved up. 
And this can be done, ladies and gentlemen. Go look at the bank statements. <laughs> Six to 12 months of your lifestyle saved up. Okay. So the pandemic, people gonna hate me when I say this, but the pandemic was not a problem for people's income. It just lifted a complete band-aid and snatched the pain off of people because most people never followed the rule of having the stash. If a lot of people had this, they wouldn't have been worried about all this stuff going on, right? So a lot of people were affected because they didn't even have a thousand dollars in their savings account. Okay, so immediate lifestyle. Another thing is usually what we call saving to invest. This is your capital. Also, your disposal. Whatever name, whatever word you want to use, it's all the same. Okay. Disposable income. Okay. So the save to invest is what we basically talked about today. How to become basically your own shark tank. Allocating this money, saving to invest to create more streams of income. Saving to invest to build up a network. Saving to invest to put it into those stocks portfolio, the crypto portfolio. Saving to invest into somebody's business so that you can bring back passive income and so that you can create a higher net worth. Guys, if you do this, if this really becomes your lifestyle, not just for a season, not for six months, 12 months, five years, the next five years is me really, really learning to become a master. But this is, gonna, this is my lifestyle, right? So what happens, once you look up like, oh my God, I got 30K in my savings account. Man, I got 5K in my emergency. Man, I got 50K in my investment portfolio, right? The 401ks and stuff is just a bonus. Like that stuff, that won't even really matter because you've done it for yourself, right? You'll never get out of a 401k that you can do for yourself, okay? So unless you try to throw it all in there, right? So you have to be mindful. You can set yourself up. You can have a complete 180 happen in your life by complete, just knowing these, these, these basic rules and, and allocating your income, all right? And I'm gonna go over the, with the six things to do with a dollar, allocating your money, you know, where to allocate your money and um, leveraging a business account next week. So we can do the same call next Wednesday at six. And uh, I think that'd be good for us. But you really, really wanna know those principles, guys, and you completely change your life. So don't feel the pressure of feeling like you gotta show people all of it. Like I don't emulate nobody but billionaires. I look at Jay-Z. I look at Greg, I mean, um, Jeff Bezos. I look at Mark Zuckerberg. I look at Warren Buffett. I look at what they do. They wear the same clothes. They live in the same house. And if they buy jewelry or something like that of that nature, it's because they're using it as an investment. All right. They go buy a $100,000 watch because the watch can be liquidated into cash if needed in case of emergency. All right. But you figure out what you want those particular assets to be. You can find it over time. But this is what you want to focus on. Saving to invest and getting that debt down. We'll talk about debt next week, too. Um, and credit. I'm going to do more on some credit next week. So, yeah, that's that's it, ma'am. I'm excited. I hope you guys caught some value, started having some lifestyle leaps and changes going on here. And uh, let's make it happen. <laughs> I got to go drive. I'll go to play these Thank drums. Thank you. Absolutely. No, thank you, Miss Miss Carlisle, for bringing us all together. Uh, I'm sure somebody else wanted to know and way to make it happen. What was your biggest takeaway tonight? Y'all can unmute your line or drop it in the tech box. What was your biggest takeaway before I dip out of here? One of mine was to truly be ed get educated on really like, you know, how to manage and what to do with your finances. Like that's truly important. So I definitely appreciate the value. Absolutely, Mr. Payroll. Good to see you, bro. Anybody else? What was your biggest takeaway? My lifestyle should be under 25% of my income. That's a game changer right there. You would breathe. You would breathe. <laughs> Knowing that. And it gives you a target. So once you know your expenses, just times about two and then times about three. And time, you can just keep making you go because what happens, the difference between somebody making $100,000 a year Versus a person making a millionaire, they just stop making new goals. Just make it a goal and your, your God will give you the plan. He's going to send you the plan. So much as mine is going to help you figure out that plan. But if you stick to just budgeting and allocating, 
it may take you longer. It may it may take you five years to, to reach a certain benchmark. At least you stuck to the plan, you were disciplined because you can you can keep the same habits and still end up broke. So change your habits, change your change your bank account. All right. All right, well, let's double up, y'all. I'm going to head on out here to play these drums. It's been a blessing. Thank you guys for allowing me to share some value tonight. And I'll see y'all next week. Have a good night.